Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today. I, If you're new to this, to this channel, um, I'd like to um, say that my purpose as an inactive Jehovah's Witness is to bring to light the difference and the um, of what I was taught in comparison to what the Bible actually teaches and it's I in no way do I disparage or insult or belittle my fellow brethren who many of whom are still uh, active Jehovah's Witnesses and whom I continue to keep uh, in touch with as I am just disassociated but not I never resigned or anything but I am just inactive but I I extend my hand in showing you directly from the New World Translation online at JW.org because I care about you guys, each and every single one of you. Because it's not you that I blame, but rather our leaders, the supposed uh, governing body, the discreet slave. You know that they were supposed to teach us the truth but sadly as I started to read the Bible and to pray to God to give me his hope to bless me with his Holy Spirit I started seeing things a lot different so welcome all I can say is just welcome and just listen to what I have to say you know you can click off at any time but my dear brother go through the scriptures don't believe me believe the scriptures but a few days ago I did a video titled do you as a Jehovah's Witness believe the Bible this touched on a very sensitive subject even for me because it, it may not be for everyone and I'm bringing this up because especially if you're an active Jehovah's Witness the video touches on the Trinity and you know it's the Trinity that the Jehovah's Witness leaders they have all but made sure to try and make the Trinity look like a false third century teaching from Christendom but if you see that video I go straight to the through the New World Translation from the scriptures and they more than speak for themselves so you know, as a Jehovah's Witness, you just really have to ask yourself, who am I to believe? What I'm reading in black and white, or should I say in color, you know, the Holy Scriptures, or what I've been taught and told all my life. Perhaps you grew up or were born into the organization. Who are you going to believe? And today that's going to kind of touch on it as far as relying on human leaders. And this presentation today is going to touch on that. But my fellow brethren, my dearest, dearest brothers, the choice is yours. But it is your choice. Because you will actually have to answer to God. Not them. They can go on uh, deceiving whomever, whatever they want and it's you yourself that are going to have to answer my friend and I plead with you look into the scriptures but back to today's video today we will be discussing if God actually left an organization for people to join and thereby be saved through this organization now I'm speaking of the Jehovah's Witness organization because as I remember being told time and time again, you got to get on that ark. You know, if you're not a witness, if you're not on the ark of salvation, you're not going to make it. But as the Holy Spirit opened my eyes and I started comparing scripture with scripture, it the Bible really told me something else, you know. And then one by one, I started debunking the out of context scriptures that I have been taught all my life. You know, I shouldn't have been able to do that if it was the truth. 
I should not have been able to do that, but I did. I've done that with virtually all the teachings of the Jehovah's Witness leaders and many that I haven't even done videos on yet that I know the answer to. So let's get started today by asking just a simple question and I'll be using the name Jehovah and I say that with all due respect my dear friends and brothers. I'm going to be using the name Jehovah as the Jehovah's Witness leaders have named the Father, okay? But as if you see the video that I had spoken to you about that does touch on the Trinity, you know, it clearly shows that Jehovah is actually Jesus and not the Father, okay? He is the Son, but the person spoken of in the Old Testament is actually Jesus, the Son. And it is Jesus who would reveal the Father. Okay, but let that's you know that's another that's the other video. And if you know you're you know go look at it. You know let the Bible speak to you. But back to today, the question begs: Does God have or had a centralized international earthly organization? that he used back in biblical times and that he continues to use today to carry out his will. If no, then who, what, or whom does he use to fulfill his purpose? Because it has to be, you know, his will needs to be done. So, first, let's see the reasoning that the Jehovah's Witness leaders use in justifying having this authority over this supposed God, godly appointed earthly organization, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, otherwise known as the Jehovah's Witnesses. I looked up two, two uh, quotes from the publications, and the first one that I found is in the, is in the can, you can find it in the November 2016 edition of the Watchtower, the study edition magazine it says and I quote the universe truly is a marvel of organization surely then we should expect that Jehovah wants his worshipers to be well organized unquote so here the claim by the Jehovah's Witness leaders is that God or his people need to be organized because God is a God of order and, and it's true there has to be a semblance of organization but not on the macro level or or in such a grand level grandeur uh, level that they have made it to be but there does have to be some sort of organization in order for this because Christ himself sent out, sent them out two by two, I think it was 70 brothers that he sent out to preach. So there is, has to be some semblance of organization, but the question is, do we need to be under the yoke and under the threat of having to be part of this organization in order to have God's approval and be saved? That's 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 the the underlying situation here. So let's look at the second reason that the organization that the Jehovah's Witness leaders claim for having an organization, or for God, Jehovah God having an organization. In the April fifteenth Watchtower of two thousand three, again the study edition magazine, it says, and I quote, accomplishing these goals could not be done by accident and they're talking about the preaching okay continuing for Christ's followers to be successful the work would need to be well organized now as I said there was a level of organization but it was not centralized okay so here they claim that the preaching to the entire world in order to reach the entire world would have 
had to require that Jesus have an organization. Now, if you remember Jesus' words, he himself said, my kingdom is not of this earth. You know, it's not of this realm. Otherwise, when he came, he would have reigned over it, right? Naturally, he would have went back, but he would have, uh, he would have assigned someone which a lot of people say that Peter was the foundation of the modern day church and the Catholic Church does um, does uh, teach that but the the point is that they are different churches and why do I say that each church is independent because if you go back into the scriptures in Revelation chapter 1 I think was where Christ is writing these letters or inspiring these letters to be written to the different congregations the seven congregations I believe or four congregations but they are independent churches otherwise we wouldn't he have gone directly to the governing body in Jerusalem and said look I need to address the congregations this is God's uh, organization here so I need to go I need to go through you but no, instead, he bypassed that because there wasn't one. Everyone was independent of each other, but still believed in the same. So he wrote independently to each one, individually. So that's basically all the Jehovah's Witness reasoning for having a modern-day organization. Okay, So now let's address these two points. Okay, And it's, I've kind of you know preface that a little bit by uh, pointing out what Christ did and bypassing uh, the supposedly existing Jerusalem governing body okay so their first the, the their first reason that the Jehovah's Witness leaders give for God having a modern-day organization is because God is a God of disorder and hence he would naturally want his worshipers to be organized okay if this is true then that means God had a centralized organization directing his people during the first century right but if that's the case if that is true where is this organization mentioned in biblical times like for example I, I just gave an example of Christ uh, bypassing this Jerusalem uh, the Jerusalem Council which the Jehovah's Witness leaders like to use and you know the one the few times in scripture in acts where people are laying money at the feet of the apostles but they would they fail to understand is that the context of the scriptures do not allow for an organization to actually ex to have existed see they 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 pick and choose these scriptures and say oh look 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 there there really was they were in charge they may have been in charge, you know, in their immediate areas, but as you will see, they weren't actually in charge of a centralized organization. Every every church was independent. Okay? They like to use the Jerusalem Council, you know, comprised of some apostles. But I'll tell you why that's not true. Why it wasn't a governing body and it wasn't centralized to where everything was coming from there. Because first, there's the point that Christ bypassed them completely and ignored them and just wrote directly. Okay? Now, think about this. There's no way that there could have been one because otherwise, why would Paul blatantly, the Apostle Paul, blatantly ignore them and for so many years until he finally met with them but let's 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 read that account so we see you see what I'm talking about here okay and there was if God really did have an organization okay we're gonna see here in Galatians chapter 1 okay what did Paul do as soon as Christ called them Okay, and that's another thing. Christ did not go through this supposedly existing uh, Jehovah's organization, and he completely bypassed it and just selected Paul on the road to Damascus. You know. So let's go to fifth chapter uh, Galatians one, 
chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, and it says, But when God, and here the Apostle Paul is speaking, But when God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, thought good to reveal his son through me, so that I might declare the good news about him to the nations, I did not immediately consult with any human, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before I was, but I went to Arabia, and then I returned to Damascus. Then three years later I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, and I stayed with him for fifteen days, but I did not see any of the other apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. Now regarding the things I am writing you, I assure you before God that I am not lying. You know, he, here it is, and you know, in Paul's own words, what he did. I mean, he completely ignored this supposedly existing Jehovah's organization in the first century. Now, that's a pretty, pretty big deal. Okay, if, if in fact, this centralized organization really did, did exist. Let's go to Galatians chapter 2, and let's see what 1 says, verse 1. Then, after 14 years, I again went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas, also taking Titus along with me. Here Paul is saying explicitly and clearly that first, in chapter 1, he didn't confer with anyone, any human, much less any mythical governing body. And here he's saying it was 14 years that he did, did finally go up again to Jerusalem and he finally did meet up with the apostles. And that was only because of the circumcision problem that they were having. So, the Apostle Paul's actions would certainly be considered disorganized by Jehovah, wouldn't it? It only, it only makes sense. So, why is it that the Apostle Paul was writing letters to different congregations if these were supposed to come from Jerusalem to begin with? Again, if everything was directed from Jerusalem. Why did Christ not go through them when he selected the Apostle Paul? And why would Jehovah not punish the Apostle Paul for ignoring his beloved organization in Jerusalem? See, the Jehovah's Witness leaders like to claim that they do everything just like first century Christians, but it seems that Jehovah just didn't want us to know that he had an organization in the first century. Otherwise, how clearly this would show up in Scripture for all to see. Moreover, where are the governing body letters to the different congregations? Where is their signature? Wouldn't it make sense for Jehovah to have left us at least some proof that his organization did exist? Wouldn't have Jehovah included at the very least one of his organization's letter to any congregation and included this into the Bible canon? Or at least left some trace of it in any known manuscripts? It just doesn't make sense. But let's move on and address the second reason that Jehovah's Witness, the Jehovah's Witness leaders use to justify their modern day organization, the Watchtower. The Jehovah's Witness leaders claim that unless the preaching was properly coordinated by an organization, that the message would not be able to reach the ends of the earth. And this is certainly true. If it was a man-made organization, Okay, for example, I'm going to give you an example here. Companies like IBM, Apple, Microsoft, Google. Certainly these companies had to organize themselves to, to be able to sell their products, market their products, ship their products around the world. See? But this is not IBM, Apple. Microsoft or Google, you're talking about the Almighty God. You're talking about the Lord Christ. He doesn't need anything to that effect. You know, 
the Jehovah's Witness leaders like to say, well, before we came on the map or came on the scene here in the eight, late 1800s with Charles, Te uh, Charles Russell, uh, you know, we needed to get organized. Otherwise, how, how would uh, the name of Christ, you know, reach everywhere? Well, uh, sorry to break it to you, to the leaders, the Jehovah's Witness leaders, but Christian Christianity is the largest religion on the planet. With over 2.2 billion people on the planet professing Christianity. That's nearly 31% of Earth's population. Now, naturally, not all of the 2.2 billion people are true Christians, just like not all 8 plus million Jehovah's Witness members are true Jehovah's Witnesses. And I say that with all due respect. Everybody's got bad apples. But the point is, how far and why the Christian teaching has reached. Christianity, as it's taught, true Christianity in the Bible, is actually reached places where the Jehovah's Witnesses have not even been or have been able to infiltrate, so to speak. Think about that one. Now, many, you know, th th this doesn't take into account how the message and the many accounts found in scripture where Christianity actually reached many countries back in Bible, biblical times, far and wide. As a matter of fact, Christianity spread almost to every place that the Roman Empire had reached, which at one point under Emperor Trajan, it came to be over 59 million residents under Roman rule. And of course, uh, the Emperor Constantine, I think, made Christianity the national religion. So, even much more reason that it spread then. So, think about that one. Think about that one. And the interesting thing about this statistic is that the Jehovah's Witness leaders somehow claim that the 144,000 were chosen over back in biblical times and some in modern day times. Um, I can tell you right now that the, that's not 144,000. As a matter of fact, I'll just come out and say it, the, the 144,000, it's actually, that's a measurement of the heavenly Jerusalem which is basically the Christian, all of the members of Christianity that are part of the heavenly Jerusalem. And I'll touch on this more in another video, but I mean, it, because every time I say 144,000 or the anointed, you know, the, you know, um, you might misunderstand me, but that basically that's what it is. And I'll, um, I'll expand on that in another video, but what do the scriptures say in regards to modern day Christians relying on man-made organizations today? And what did God say about men, specifically like the Jehovah's Witness leaders, who tell their members that being loyal to them is like being loyal to Jehovah God? Let's go to the scriptures. See, I, I get excited because that's one thing, is that the scriptures cannot lie. And when I expose the teachings of the false teachings of the Jehovah's Witness leaders, I know that God's heart rejoices because it's I'm setting people in a way, I'm setting them, helping them to set free of this bondage that they're under, this delusion that they have been taught perhaps all their life like I was. And, you know, it's, it's, it's rejo it rejoices my heart, and I'm sure it rejoices the Lord's heart as well. But Psalms 146 verse 3 says, Do not put your trust in princes or nobles, nor in a son of man who cannot bring salvation. 
the scriptures are clear right there why are you going to trust and yet time and time again we were told you got to trust the governing body you got to trust the discreet slave that's not what the scriptures are saying friends and brothers let's go to proverbs where is proverbs chapter 29 verse 25 trembling at men is a snare but the one trusting in Jehovah will be protected. This is actually supposed to say fear of men is a snare or a trap. So see this should this should read fear of men is a trap but the one trusting in the Lord will be protected and we'll just leave Jehovah's name now for now. But it's true. And that's why I say that you're going to trust the script, you're going to trust man, the Jehovah's Witness leaders over the scriptures that you're reading directly from the New World Translation. That's something really to consider, friends. Let's now go to Isaiah. Isaiah 29. And I went too far. Isaiah 29, verses 13 and 14. Jehovah says, This people approach me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their heart is far removed from me, and their fear of me is based on commands of men that they have been taught. Therefore I am the one who will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish, and the understanding of their discreet men will be hidden. How ironic that here God uses the word discreet, and commands of men because that's basically the describing the Jehovah's Witness leaders and how they supersede even scripture as I have shown you in my other videos and they say no whatever we say that's what you're gonna believe however we translate the scriptures that's how you're gonna understand them and God here is saying wait a second you're gonna fear me God based on the commands of men and the understanding of these supposedly discreet men. Yeah, it's uh, pretty harsh words there. But let's continue reading. How, who, in whom should we trust? Isaiah 44 this time. Okay. Chapter 25. It says, I am frustrating the signs of the empty talkers or the false prophets. I am frustrating the signs of the false prophets, and I am the one who makes diviners act like fools, the one confounding the wise men and turning their knowledge into foolishness. It, you know, this scripture is practically speaking about not only the Jehovah's Witness leaders, because they're not the only ones at fault here. There's actually a lot of false, um, supposedly, people that are God's you know prophets or God's representatives on earth and you know they basically just want your money as a matter of fact I got one in the mail just the other day and you know sadly enough I just tore it up and threw it in the, in the trash because it, it, that's what it is you know and this is exactly what I mean the Jehovah's Witness leaders I speak about them because that's what I was a part of but doesn't mean that other religions and other people are exempt but this is so so true of the Jehovah's Witness leaders because it says here he says he's frustrating the signs of the empty talkers and I'm the one who makes diviners act like fools how many times have the Jehovah's Witness leaders say no this is this this information is a hundred percent you can trust it you can take it to the bank and then God makes them look like fools because then later on what happens new light there has to be revisions or adjustments to those sometimes you flat out abandon the teachings just like you did back in Charles Russell's day Judge Rutherford's day Norris day Francis day and I can go on and on and on 
because this is exactly what God does, is he frustrates these signs of these empty, false prophets and makes them look like fools. Think 1975. Think 1925. 1914 with the generation teaching. It's, you know, it's... It just goes on and on, but brothers and sisters, believe the scriptures. Let's continue. Matthew. And we're, we're trying to identify if there was, in fact, a organization and if there is a need for an organization nowadays. Okay. Chap Matthew chapter 23, verses 8 through 12. But you, do not you be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, and all of you are brothers. Moreover, moreover, do not call anyone your father on earth, for one is your father, the heavenly one. Neither be called leaders, for your leader is one, Christ. But the greatest among you must be your servant. That's what minister means. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. There's no way that you're going to get the governing body to drop that name, the governing body, and just be simply Brother Loesch, Brother, now there's a Brother Cook, Brother Sanderson. There's no way. They have to have that title because they're not humble. You see, that's why in every single, notice how much of a big deal the governing body makes it when they make announcements and, and in the assemblies. If it's coming from the governing body, you're practically, you're practically having God speak to you then. And I know every single one of you brothers is, it thinks that. Because when they speak, we listen. At least I used to listen. But they are treated practically like God's. And as a matter of fact, Samuel heard in uh, one of the uh, annual meetings, uh, the one of those uh, videos that we saw in the Kingdom Hall, he actually got insulted because nobody was out there to greet him when he pulled up to the Kingdom Hall. I was disgusted that he would even mention that. He said, and I don't know if you guys remember it, and maybe I can get a clip of it, but he said that, only children were out there to welcome him, to greet him, and no brothers were around. That's the kind of thinking that these people have, that these uh, Jehovah's Witness leaders have, okay? But we're all brothers. I mean, come on, Christ washed the feet of his apostles. When are you going to see the governing body doing something humble like that? You're not. You're not. Because it's all about titles with those people. At assemblies, how many times do we not hear a brother's resume right before he goes up to the platform and, and give a talk? That's not humble. And that's, in, that's implemented by the governing body. Okay? For them to do that. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 16, verse 15. So he said to them, You are those who declare yourself righteous before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is considered exalted by men is a disgusting thing in God's sight. How many times have we heard it at assemblies? Oh, Mr. Uh, Johnson. Uh, helper to the uh, governing body committee or the writing committee will be visiting us and giving a, giving a talk. I could care less where he came from or who he is. What should matter should be the substance of his talk. Not who he is. I don't care who you are. You're just, you're just another brother. You're just a messenger. That should not matter, but they exalt these people to so they can continue to keep them on that little ferret wheel and continue working. That's how cults operate. Let's go to Acts. Chapter 5, verse 29. And we're not going to get off of the topic of the organization because 
you'll see how one is not required. But there has to be a semblance of organization on the local level. Okay? 529. In answer, Peter and the other apostles said, We must obey God as ruler rather than men. Obviously, that's not the case with many Jehovah's Witnesses. And it's sad for my brothers. I, I weep. My heart hurts. It aches for my brothers. But I know that God willing, he will open the eyes of many. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, So that your faith might be not in men's wisdom, but in God's power. 13. These things we also speak, not with the words taught by human wisdom, but with where I lost myself, but with those taught by the Spirit as we explain spiritual matters with spiritual words. Okay? Same 1 Corinthians, this time chapter 7, verse 13. And if a woman has an un... 23, my apologies. 23. You were bought with a price. Stop becoming slaves of men. You remember that monthly report on your service hours? You remember that publisher card that gets sent from congregation to congregation with an introduction letter sometimes? You're slaves. I was a slave. Now I slave for the Lord. Because that's what the apostles did. They slave for Christ. My friends, my brothers, my dear brothers, free yourself of this yoke that you have around your neck. There, is, there, there was any, most of the laws and rules and regulations that the Jehovah's Witness leaders have implemented uh, into this, or, this mythical organization is all they're doing. They've conjured this up in their mind. Free yourselves. Live. That's why Christ said, my load is, is light. Let's continue on and let's go to Galatians now. Galatians again, chapter 1, verse 1 and then 10. Paul, an apostle, neither from men nor through a man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him up for the dead. And 10. But here, okay, that's what it says. Neither from men nor through a man but through Jesus Christ. You notice how Paul here is saying that it wasn't through any s mythical governing body that he was assigned and appointed and selected? Neither from men, nor through a man. He could have added, nor through a governing body, or a discreet slave, but through Jesus Christ. You see that? Now, if Jehovah had an organization, what a disservice and a slap in the face that would have been to him for him not to mention it here. Think about it, my brothers. Think about it. Let's go to 10. Is it, in fact, men I am now trying to persuade or God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still pleasing men, I would not be Christ's slave. That's why I say you're, you're a slave of Christ. You're not a slave of Jehovah or anybody else. And Jehovah being the same, but... He is rightfully called or designated and named by Gabriel or by the Father through Gabriel telling Mary that he would be called Jesus. So that's what you're supposed to call him. Second Timothy. Now, and I apologize if I'm getting long-winded on this video. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 7. Always learning and yet never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. This word accurate is not in the original scriptures that was added by the Ch New World Translation Committee or the Jehovah's Witness leaders. But it's true. Think about how many times we study the same thing over and over and over and over again. You know why we never could come to knowledge of truth? because there is no Holy Spirit guiding. Otherwise, it would be practically embedded in us. But we are constantly having to be reminded of these 
of these uh, things in the scriptures. Now we may know the basics, but we need to learn the deep things of God. The things that really matter. The morality is there. We, we, we are moral people, but brothers, we need to be taught by the Spirit. Let's go to John now. 3, 19 through 21. Now this is the basis for judgment that the light has come into the world, talking about Jesus Christ, but men have loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. For whoever practices vile things hates Christ and does not come to Christ, so that his works may not be reproved or exposed. That's what that says. But whoever does what is true comes to Christ, so that his works may be made manifest as having been done in harmony with God. If the Jehovah's Witness leaders would come to Christ, trust me, they wouldn't have to do all the revisions and adjustments and the new light and this and that. It's incredible. But how would God make sure to have these good news of Christ and the name of Christ preached in all the world today, right? How would God do this without having a central organ international organization? Well, let's let the scriptures answer us. Let's go to Joel. Where's Joel? There's Joel. Chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. And we're going to see how this should be done even if it's done on a local level after that I will pour out my spirit on every sort of flesh or human or person and your sons and your daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions and even on my male slaves and female slaves I will pour out my spirit in those days notice how it says here that he will pour out his spirit he will pour out his spirit. You're going to see how I'm going to quote from Acts. In Acts, the Apostle Paul, I believe, or Peter, quotes from this scripture. And you, you'll see how they, the Jehovah's Witness leaders have inserted some, the word some, into this. To make it read, I will pour out some of my spirit. I will pour out some of my spirit, okay? Just so you can see how they, the scriptures have been corrupted, but getting back to the point, the Holy Spirit. There's nothing impossible for the Holy Spirit. There's nothing impossible for Christ. There's nothing impossible for God. That's what was going to make this message go everywhere be spread which is points out the statistics that I pointed out to you earlier okay Acts chapter 2 verses 17 and 18 remember I'm quoting from Joel here and in the last days God says I will pour out some of my spirit some you notice how they inserted some instead of leaving it the proper translation I will pour out some of my spirit on every sort of a person and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams and even all my male slaves and all my female slaves I will pour out some again of my spirit in those days and they will prophesy now again here they insert some now why did they insert some because they don't want for it to read like Joel because again this touches on the Trinity they don't they want to stay as far away from the Trinity now I'm actually gonna make a video that points this out where they deliver are deliberate which I've already pointed out in trying to hide the true identity of Christ because God the Holy Spirit is 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 um, God and is an individual entity itself in closing, allow me to say this. 
Some detractors, especially the Jehovah's Witness leaders, may say that Christianity is not of one mind because of so many denominations that exist. And although Christianity is comprised of many different denominations, there's four very important fundamental teachings that have never changed and will never and will never change, which are crucial to the Christian faith. First, the deity of Christ. They deny this. Second, the death and bodily resurrection of Christ. They deny this. They, they say that a spirit was raised, that not his actual body was raised. Okay? He was raised, but it wasn't his body. Okay? And that's blasphemous. Third, the heavenly inheritance for all true Christian believers. They deny that. And fourth, the reality of eternal damnation in hell. And they deny that as well. And I will make a video on hell. Many may not like it because it's something that seems makes God seem harsh and not a loving God, but he is just. And Christ taught it, it's in the scriptures, and who are we to question? I think it's better that we just get right with God now. But see, why has Christianity hold in, held on to these four fundamental teachings without ever changing them? simple because they are in scripture and not in just one scripture but in several scriptures okay and it is in these teachings that I plan on producing further videos detailing where these teachings can clearly be found thank you for joining me today I thank you for your time if you are a practicing active Jehovah's Witness rest assured that I love and care for you and I pray that one beautiful day soon, I know that the Holy Spirit will shine a light that you will be able to clearly see. God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. And may God bless everyone else. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and until tomorrow, friends.